It is good to see you at Shiloh Worship Center, a place of... Come on, I cannot hear Shiloh Worship Center, a place of breakthrough. Amen. My name is Paul Monene, and I am glad and honored to bring the word of the Lord. I want to uh, first appreciate in absentia the presence of uh, uh, our bishop and mom, Dr. Jimmy and Pastor Alice, and the entire leadership of the church also for the opportunity to bring the word of the Lord. I do not take it for granted. Thank you, Pastor Brian and the rest of the leadership. Amen. I pray that this morning the Lord shall speak to you. Amen. Are you ready for the word? Are you ready for the word? This idea kwa ambia jirani neighbor. You don't have to look like the weather. You can look better. <laughs> look for another neighbor and tell them neighbor. <laughs> I know it's cold and it's chilly, but you don't have to look like because greater is he that is in you than brothers if you are sana. Amen. Therefore we refuse to look like the weather. We, we, we declare that we shall glow and shine and smile and talk to your neighbor. I, I am speaking on a topic that I've entitled Jesus the Rewarder. Jesus the Rewarder. Jesus the Rewarder. Jesus the Rewarder. If you have your Bible and your notes, uh, your notebook, you can write it down. Jesus the Rewarder. And I am in John chapter number 11. And verse number one, I, will, I have a long story to read for you, and therefore I'll read it very fast, and then we can break it down and bring out some lessons that we find from that scripture, and therefore allow me to read it very fast, because we are moving to verse number 45, uh, but I'll leave, I will read a few portions. The Bible says, Now a certain man who was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. Verse number two, the Bible says, It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with the fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother uh, Lazarus was sick. Verse number three, the Bible says, Therefore the sisters sent him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. Verse number four, the Bible says, When Jesus heard it, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Verse number five, the Bible says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Verse number six, the Bible says, So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. I will jump to, number verse, uh, to verse number 14. The Bible says, Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sake. I was not fair that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas who is called the twin, say to his fellow disciples, let us go and uh, that we may die with him. Verse number 17, the Bible says, so when Jesus came and found that he had already been in the tomb for four days, now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. Uh -huh. And uh, many of the Jews uh, who joined the women around Mother and Mary to comfort them concerning their, uh, their brothers. Uh -huh. Verse number 20, the Bible says, now Mother, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went to him and said, but Mary was seated uh, in the house. Now mother said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. Verse number 22, the Bible says, but even now I know that whatever you ask of God, he will give and to you. Uh, I continue reading verse number 23. Bible says that uh, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Mother said, I know he will rise in the day, in the last day. Jesus said to her that I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. But whoever believe, who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Verse number 27. Mother said, yes, I believe. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We can leave it at there uh, at that point and look at another scripture in First Corinthians chapter number fifteen and verse number fifty-eight. First Corinthians chapter fifteen and verse number fifty-eight. Let us read this together. It's one verse. One to go. We say, therefore, my beloved, uh -huh, brethren, be steadfast, uh -huh, immovable, always abounding uh -huh, in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not... Uh, let us read it one more time as people who believe it. Therefore, therefore, my... Uh -huh, 
be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I'm speaking on Jesus, the rewarder. Jesus, the rewarder. Help me preach to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, in case you forgot or in case you don't feel like it, Jesus is a rewarder. Jesus, he's a rewarder. He's not a debtor of any man. He's not a debtor of any man. I know many of the times that we serve the Lord, many of the times that we give, and we give ourselves to the work of the Lord, and we go through things that question, is he really a rewarder? I do not know whether you've been in that place that you're you are asking yourself, is he really a rewarder? Really, is he a rewarder? Maybe you're serving the Lord, and you have relatives who are unwell. You're serving the Lord and you do not have a job and yet you've been praying for a job and you've prayed for people and they have gotten jobs. Bonus for sana. You, you are serving the Lord and you've given yourself into the work of the Lord but still you're struggling finance, you know, in your finances and you ask yourself a question. Is Jesus a rewarder? At times, if we are to be honest with ourselves, there are times that we get to that place and ask ourselves, is he really a rewarder? And when I was looking at this uh, portion of scripture uh, it done in me in a different way. Uh, it's normally called the story of Lazarus, but today I want to try to lead the story of Mary. When we read this scripture in verse number one of uh, Matthew chapter, uh, John chapter number eleven, the Bible says that. Uh, the Bible says that now there was a, a, sick, a man who was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister, mother. Verse number two, the Bible says that it was, give us that verse number two, the Bible says, it was that Mary who anointed the Lord with the fragrant oil and wiped his feet with a hair whose brother was sick. If I'm to give you a background of this scripture in a little bit, when you read John chapter 10, Jesus was journeying to Jerusalem. He was just from preaching where uh, John the Baptist had been preaching, where John the Baptist was, uh, was, was, was baptizing people. He was moving towards Jordan. And therefore, when we read this scripture, Jesus was not very far away from Bethany. He was not very far away from where, where these guys were. And now, uh, Mary and her sister mother, they send him, they send him a message and tell you that your brother, he who you love, he is sick. And to make matters worse, or to make the matters better, that this was the Mary who had anointed Jesus with oil. If you read in other translation, like the NLT, they will tell you that this oil, it was an expensive oil. It is equated to one year's labor. It is equated to one year's labor. Can you imagine all your salary, Pastor Brian, from January, February, March, April, you've been working, and then you lay it at the feet of one man. You'd expect when you call him, in fact, when you whisper to him, whisper to him. He should do what? He should respond because you have given your all one year's labor. I want you to think about it. Giving your whole salary, your labor for one, one year. And then your brother is sick. When you look at this scripture, I want you to think in this way. I do not want, to, I know most of you are the age of my parents. You have 15 brothers, a whole football club, 16, 20. But now in our day, See, the other generation used to have 16, 17, 20 brothers. So you have an allowance to love seven and leave the rest, you know. Buenas fe sana. You can, you can have seven or eight and you have an allowance to, you know, there's that brother who you do not. But this one, we are talking about how many brothers? One, at least who is mentioned. We have Martha and then we have Lazarus and then we have Mary, blessed be the name of the Lord. I want you to think, you have three brothers. Let me use Pastor Brian. You have how many brothers? Uh, one brother, sorry. You have one brother. You have one sister. Our pastor here has one sister. Blessed be the name of the Lord. To make matters worse, you have given this man, uh -huh, you are all ears of payment. And this, you are only sister or you are only brother. He is unwell. I know I am talking to people who have brothers and sisters who are unwell. Do you Can you imagine how it felt like? Can you imagine how it felt like? It felt uh, frustrating. It felt, you know, this man cannot even see the labor that I have 
I have the, the, the effort that I have made, the labor that I have put in, in his life, in his feet. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And this is it. This is it. This is how at times as believers we feel, if we are to be honest with one another. This is how it feels. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But I want to take you this uh, morning in a journey of reward. In a journey of reward. Tell your neighbor the journey of reward. There, look at for another neighbor, Monya Kona Royal Church, Mambia neighbor. There is a journey of reward. There is a journey of reward. Number one, the journey of reward starts with relationship. The journey of reward starts with relationship. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When we look at this portion of scripture, we realize that Mary had a relationship with Jesus. Mary had a relationship with Jesus. When again we look at this portion of scripture, we realize Lazarus, who was the dead man, had also a relationship with Jesus and a public relationship. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His relationship with Jesus was not hidden. That's why they sent to him and tell him, Master, you, he who you love is sick. Help me to ask your neighbor, neighbor, if you are the one who is sick... <laughs> Would that, uh, if that information arrive that way? Uh, look, uh, look for another neighbor. Mulize neighbor. Kama ni wewe kwa mgonjwa. Would that information be taken that way? Ama tukifika useme jama fulani huko ni? Ni mgonjwa. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Somebody say relationship. We also told that Jesus himself, he describes uh, uh, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha to the disciples in verse number 11 that our friend is sick. In all those portions of scripture, we realize that they had one common thing. What? Relationship. And it's not a private relationship. It is a public relationship. I, want to came, to, I came to speak to somebody today and tell them that you, your relationship with Jesus should not be a private affair. Help me preach to somebody and tell them, neighbor, your, your relationship with Jesus, it is, should not be a private Ah, look for another neighbor, Mwambi, a neighbor. Yes, you see, Mpango Akando. Uh, right? Our relationship with Jesus should not be a private affair. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I, I wrote here, I wrote here that uh, it is only unsure relationships that are made private. Only unsure relationships are made private. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's why we realize that um, when a man sees a woman and is sure about her, he no longer makes it private. It is made what? Public. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There is no marriage for the married people who are in the house. There is no marriage that is private. I want you to speak to a neighbor and help, them, help me preach to them. Tell them, neighbor, your relationship with Jesus should not be a private affair. Ndiyo kikiumana, tunajua tutaenda kukuulizia help wapi. Ah, uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. We will not go to Pharaoh. We will not go to Herod. We will go to Jesus and tell him our friend, your friend is sick. Therefore, I rebuke every spirit of having private relationship with Jesus. Our relationship with Jesus will be a public affair. Our fellow colleagues we will, will know that we love Jesus. Our family members will know that we love Jesus. Our children will know that that we love Jesus. The nation of Kenya, where we work, will know that we love Jesus because our relationship with Jesus is no longer a private. Uh, help me preach to a neighbor, I'm a neighbor, to be safe and sure that your relationship with Jesus is a public. Amen. Amen. Because true love cannot be hidden. Genuine love cannot be hidden. And therefore, the journey of reward starts with relationship. I want to ask you, do you have a relationship with Jesus? You may be serving, but you do not have a relationship with Jesus. You may be here and a church elder, but you do not have a relationship with Jesus. Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Do you know he who is risen? Ask your neighbor, look at your neighbor at the eye and ask them, do you have a relationship with with Jesus? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Do you have a public relationship with Jesus? Blessed be the name of the Lord. When we look at uh, Peter, 
when the Holy Spirit came upon him, his relationship with Jesus was no longer private. We see him, he denied Jesus how many times? Three times. But when the Holy Spirit came upon him, he's the same man who was addressing 3,000 with boldness. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And telling them, you are, the, you are saying that we are drunk, but we are not drunk of wine. We are drunk of the Spirit of the Lord. Buenas sana. Therefore, our relationship with Jesus will be a public affair. We'll be walking around shouting Jesus. Our lives will announce Jesus. Our cars will announce Jesus. Our families will announce Jesus. And I pray for somebody this morning that in the name of Jesus may you receive the boldness uh, to make your relationship with Jesus uh, a public affair in the name of Jesus. Uh, you shall not be ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God uh, through Christ Jesus. Somebody say amen relationship with Jesus the number one journey of reward is therefore there is no if there is no relationship there is no reward Jesus rewards relationship Jesus rewards relationship blessed be the name of the Lord and the problem we have made our relationship with Jesus a one-sided relationship we've made our relationship with Jesus a transactional relationship we go to him when there is problem but I want to tell you Jesus is not an ATM our relationship with Jesus and people also the people of God brethren should not be only one-sided it is not a give and take transaction but it is a give and give transaction uh, you can write that down it's good for your Instagram our, fa our Facebook page uh, you can just post there and you know you can write your name uh, I give you a uh, copyright our relationship with brethren and Jesus, it is not a give and take relationship, but it ought to be a give and give relationship. The problem is, as human th beings, we think, we think that because I gave you, you ought to give me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But remember Jesus, he loved us even before we, we, we loved him. He loved and loved. Therefore, child of God, your relationship with Jesus should not be a give and take relationship. It is a give and give relationship because that is the mindset of a believer. Give it all to him regardless. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job says that even if you slay me, I will still praise you. I will give and give. Help me preach to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, your relationship with Jesus, it is a give and give relationship. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Therefore, when we read at verse number one, verse number two, verse number three, we realize the number one journey of reward is relationship. The number two journey of reward is release. You can write it down. I will explain it to you. Release release we see it in john chapter number 11 and verse number two the bible says so when he heard that jesus was sick he stayed there for two for when he heard that he was sick sorry he stayed there for two more days in the place where he was now verse number six i mean verse number six the bible says so when he heard he was sick he stayed there for two more days and you ask yourself why would Jesus stay there for two more days? It was less than a, a, a day's journey. It was two miles from where he was to where Lazarus was. But he stayed there for how many days? Two more days. I was thinking to myself, for example, had Jesus responded immediately? Buenas fiestana. Had Jesus responded immediately and went and healed uh, uh, Lazarus, if I was Mary or Martha, when he was healed, I would really bully him. I would say, I would say, Jesus on time. Ah, uh, buenas fiestana. I would say, I would say, Jesus on time. I would say, Ah, help me. I would say, I would say, I on time. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And at time, God uh, delays so that we may surrender it to him. God delays so that we may surrender it to him, so that we, we, know, we may know that it is not by might, nor by power, nor by, but by his spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And this is what I wrote here, that at, time God, at times God delays to prove to us and the people who would have thought that it is them, that it is neither them, but it is him. 
it is neither, neither them nor is it us but it is him Bwana asifiwe sana. Lazarus angeenda aponywe na Yesu. Mary and mother would have really bullied him. Wambe in fact, kwanza angekosea kidogo wambe in fact you know you are supposed to be a dead man. You are going to die if you are not for me and mother telling Jesus to come and he came here quickly. Ah, uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. And I am I am speaking to people who maybe your help has delayed. There is somebody who you thought he would send you money on that particular time. There is someone you expected finances in that particular time and people thought that you are finished. God delayed that so that we may know that it is not us and it is not them but it is for the glory of their father somebody say amen look at your neighbor and help me preach to them tell them neighbor the second journey to uh, to reward it is surrender it is release release it to god blessed be the name of the lord for it is not by might nor by power but it is by his spirit somebody say amen Therefore when we when Jesus or when God delays it is not denial Pastor Brian has taught us that delay is not denial it is so that the son of God may be glorified blessed be the name of the Lord Let's look at your neighbor and tell them release it to God Look for another neighbor mwenye anakaa kuna royal church mwambie release it to God release your family to God release your son to God release your finances to God blessed be the name of the Lord I know we are about to give our pledges even if it seems like it it has delayed or the miracle that you expected has delayed just release it to God at his own time he shall make everything and everything beautiful release it to God so you know I'm going to jombe father grant me the grace to surrender everything to you father grant me the grace to surrender my life to you grant me the grace to release everything that i may know it is not me it is not people it is not my finances it is not my career it is not my gift but it is you oh god oh come on pray for yourself i pray father i receive the grace i receive the grace to surrender everything to you in the name of jesus and god's people say amen god's people say amen therefore we have said number one journey to reward is relationship god rewards relationship number two journey to reward is release and god rewards surrender god rewards surrender blessed be the name of the lord gonga jirani mwambie neighbor god rewards surrender Bwana asifiwe sana. Number three journey to uh, reward is revelation. Somebody say revelation. Somebody say revelation. Now Jesus arrives there and Lazarus is already dead. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mary is already tired. Mary is already frustrated and she does not even go to re- to receive Jesus. Even it does not concern her. But there is another character that appears there that received a revelation and her name is Martha. Bwana asifiwe sana. Would you give us the same John and give us in verse number uh, 21. Verse number 21. Verse number 21 we read it together. Verse number 21 we read it together now mother said to jesus lord if you had been here my brother would not have died verse number 22 the bible says but even now i know that whatever you ask of god god will g- come on let us read that one more time with with more faith say but even now i know that whatever you ask of God God will give it to somebody say revelation and mother comes and say I know my brother is dead I know you it feels like you came late I know it feels like you are not a rewarder but even now I know that whatever you ask of the Lord he shall give it to you that was a revelation blessed be the name of the Lord and child of God you what you ought to walk with a revelation and say I know that I know even if my my situation is this way I know that even if I am going through this he is still able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above my thinking and imagination I know my son is lost in drug and substance abuse but I still know that you are the Lord who has promised greatness to our sons and daughters father I know I am barren and I am my 
40 menopause but I know you are the God of Abraham you're the God of Sarah I am walking in the revelation walk in the revelation help me please your neighbor tell them may you walk in the revelation walk in the revelation that there is nothing that is impossible for our God somebody say amen in verse number 26 when we look when we read that scripture the bible says give us verse number 26 the bible says that whoever lives and whoever believes and believes in me shall never die uh -huh. and jesus asked do you believe this take us a little bit back maybe verse number 23 verse number 23 so that we can we can read it and jesus said to her your brother will Come on, let us read together. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Verse number 24, the Bible says, mother said to him, I know that he will rise again in the day of... Uh -huh. Verse number 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Verse number 26, Bible says, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And then uh, the, uh, he's asked a question, she's asked a question, eh? do you believe this, verse number 27, the Bible says, she say to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Let us read it together one more time. She say to him, yes, I I believe that you are the Christ. And I came to ask somebody, do you believe that he's the Lord who is able to heal you? Uh, if you believe it, say, yes, I believe. Do you believe that he is your sustainer? Do you believe that he's able to heal cancer? Do you believe he's the Lord who is able to lift you from the miry clay and set your feet upon the rock? Do you believe that he's able to heal cancer? Do you believe he's able to restore your marriage? Do you believe that he's able to heal and deliver your son and your daughter? Come on, I cannot, say, I cannot hear you. Somebody say, yes, I believe. And now I want to ask Shiloh Worship Center. Do you believe that he is the God who is able to give us 31 million? Do you believe that we shall build a cathedral and people shall come from the east and from the west and miracle signs and wonders shall happen? Somebody say, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. I do not know about you, but as for me, I believe that he is the Lord, the resurrection. I believe that he is the God, my provider. I believe he is the Lord, the Lord who remembers. I believe he is the Lord who wipes my tears. I believe he is the Lord who has promised that my sons and daughters shall not be the tail, but they shall be the head. He is the Lord who has promised that I shall be great in the land. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. I am walking through the valley and the shadow of death, but yes, I believe. I am walking through diabetes, but yes, I believe. Let me preach to your neighbor and tell them, yes, I believe. I am walking in the revelation of his word. Oh, so we know I'm going to be born and he pay revelation. Father, give me the revelation. Give me the revelation of who you are. May I walk in the revelation of who you are. May I receive a revelation in the name of Jesus. Father, upon everybody, under the sound of my voice, I pray. May you give them a revelation of who you are. May you grant them the revelation that you are the healer. May you grant them the revelation You are still the deliverer May you grant them the revelation That you are the rewarder May you receive a revelation May you receive a revelation May you receive a revelation In the name of Jesus Revelation That he can still heal that disease. Revelation that he can bring your son back home. Revelation that he can bring your daughter back home. Revelation that he can still give you a son. He can still give you a daughter. Revelation of who he is. Receive a revelation. He is the rewarder. Receive the revelation 
and every one of us may you receive a revelation that he is the rewarder he is the rewarder is the lifter up of your head may you receive a revelation that he is still the lord the lover of your soul blessed be the name of the lord a revelation is the journey to the reward we start from relationship surrender revelation that lord i know it is how it is things are bad my son and my daughter is they are no longer home my family is no longer intact i am 45 years and i am still barren i have no child but lord i believe lord i believe i am walking in that revelation i pray for you child of god as i stretch my hands to you may you receive that revelation the revelation that is still god the revelation that is still savior the revelation that is still the rewarder the revelation that is still able to heal heal your back heal your back i hear there are people who are you've been struggling with a back pain i pray may you still may you receive a revelation that he is the healer in the name of jesus christ there are people in this house and your son has been away from home you do not know where he is may you still receive a revelation may you receive a revelation that your sons and your daughters shall be great in the land in the name of jesus christ may you receive a revelation somebody's son is coming back home in the name of Jesus somebody's daughter is coming back home in the name of Jesus Christ I hear in my spirit I hear in my spirit there are some of you you have been going through a hard season of court cases court cases I pray in the name of Jesus may you receive a revelation that he is a supreme judge he is the supreme judge and those cases those cases are coming to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. I hear in my spirit there are people here who have been struggling with generational curses and you have struggled the better part of your life. I pray in the name of the Lord as I stretch my hands to you for everybody under the sound of my voice that in the name of Jesus may you receive a revelation that he is the deliverer. May you receive a revelation that he is the deliverer in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. In the name of the Lord. Revelation. The number four journey to reward. I have called it rolling the stone. I have called it rolling the stone. The number four journey to the reward. I have named it rolling the stone. This is the place of doing. Putting our faith into action. This is the place of doing. We have started from relationship. We have moved to surrender. We've walked to revelation. And right now we are rolling the stone. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is the place where our faith is put into action. In John chapter number 11 and verse number 38, this, this is where we see it. Then Jesus said again, if you could give it unto us, John 11, 38, Jesus said again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb. Jesus said again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone laid against it. Verse number 39, the Bible says, Jesus said, take away the stone. Mother, the sister of him who is dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench for he has been dead for four days. Verse number 40, Jesus said to her, did I not say that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? Verse number 42. Then they took away the stone and from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus, Jesus lifted up his voice, his eye, and said, Father, I thank you that you've always heard me. There is a place of putting our faith into action. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The, the, the challenge with rolling the stone is that when you roll the stone, there are stenches. There are stenches. And that stench could be fear. And that stench could be... Uh, that stench could be fear. That stench could be our own, uh, what, we, what we, we do not want to face. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I can tell you in every person's life, if we are to be true with each other, there are stenches, there are tombs where we've laid the stone. 
I do not know, care whether you're a pastor or a leader, but the truth of the matter, in every person's life, there is a tomb. But we ought to roll the stone, put our faith into action. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Even as we talk about the building of Shiloh Worship Center, we have, on third is a day of rolling the stone and putting our faith into action. And I know one of the stenches that you may be asking is, who, where will my bills be paid from? What will happen? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Some of us have loans, but we have committed to give. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the stench could be being followed by auctioneers. That could be a stench. Worries that we have. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But Jesus said to her, do you believe? Do you believe that you shall see the glory of God? And I came to ask a child of God, a beloved of God, do you believe that he is your provider? Do you believe that even if you give on third, you shall not lack? Do you believe that when you give on that, he's still the supplier of your needs. Do you believe even if we give on that, is the Lord who owns a cattle on a thousand hills? Do you believe that even if we give on that, he's still the Lord who owns silver and gold? Do you believe that he shall supply to your needs according to his riches and in glory? Do you believe it? We ought to roll the stone. Look at your neighbor and tell the neighbor, we ought to put our faith into action. Look for a neighbor who moyana ka kona royal church won't be a neighbor. We ought to put our faith into action. We ought to put our faith into action. We ought to roll the stone. Gonga jirai won't be roll that stone. Roll that stone. Face that aship. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In our generation, we say, come on, buyer, buyer. Ah, uh, come on, buyer. Come on, in no money. But we shall roll the stone. In other words, we shall put our faith into. It is the journey to the reward. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When you look at our fathers, there are men who are living rewarded lives. Kunawakati wali roll the stone. Some of them it had leaving their pay slips. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Leaving their workplaces. Unasema kama mbaya, mbaya. And I want to challenge us Shiloins. Next Sunday, it is a time to put our faith into. Gunga jirari muambia kama mbaya, mbaya. I shall roll that stone. I shall put my faith into. I shall not only say, Bishop, we are together, but it is only in the point of revelation. I shall also move to a place of what? Rolling the stone and putting my faith into. Putting our faith into action. And we continue in verse number 40. 41. 41. We continue. Verse number 41. John chapter uh -huh. Uh -huh. verse number 42 thank you for you've always heard me uh -huh. and I know that you will always hear me but because of the people who are standing here by I say this that they may believe that you sent me verse number 43 the Bible says now when he had said these things he cried, he cried out with a loud voice Lazarus come forth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And this morning I was sent by Jesus and I shall cry out in a loud voice. Some of us are asking, some of you are asking, why are you preaching? Why do we preach in a loud voice? It is because of this scripture. He cried out in a loud voice. He did not whisper, when you are when you are confronting some situation, when you are confronting death, you do not do what? We, you do not whisper, but we cry out in a loud voice. And now in the name of Jesus Christ, in the same power and in the same manner, I come to you in the name of the Lord. To every dead situation in your life, I call it by name. Come forth in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you are listening to me and your ministries are dead. I come in the same order in the name of Jesus the name that is above every other name and I call for your ministries I call for those ministries I call for your families I call for your marriages I call for your sons I call for your daughters I call for your finances some of us are dead in sin in the name of Jesus I cry out in a loud voice and call you out of sin and cry out of oppression and call out I call you out of the chain and the yokes of darkness I call you forth to the glory of God the Father I call you forth in the name of Jesus Mary come forth 
name of Jesus Christ, it is coming back to life. It is coming back to life. It is coming back to life. Every dead situation is coming alive. Every dead situation is coming alive. Every dead ministry is coming alive. Every dead gifting in the name of Jesus Christ. I call you Father. I call you Father. I call you Father. Some of you have been dead in castles. Right now in the name of Jesus, I set you free and call you Father. Call you for your freedom. Call you for your breakthrough call you for your destiny in the name of jesus may you receive life in the name of the lord every sphere of your life is coming alive in the name of jesus christ dead businesses are coming alive as i lift up my hands i decree and declare in the name of jesus the name above every other name every dead family is coming alive every dead finances is coming alive in the name of jesus I hear in my spirit, there's somebody in the house. I do not know who you are. You've been thinking of closing down that business. You've been debating on closing that business. I pray in the name of the Lord, the name that is above every other name, that you shall not close that business. It is coming alive in the name of Jesus Christ. And it may not be one person, it may not be two people, to every child of God. I speak life in the works of your hands. I speak life in the works of your hands. In the name of Jesus he cried it in a loud voice Lazarus come forth and in the last my last point the journey of reward is restoration restoration blessed be the name of the Lord where the dead man was laying when Jesus cried out in a loud voice life was restored life was restored blessed be the name of the Lord if you can give us if you can give us verse number 43 as we wrap this up for today verse number 43 he cried out in a loud voice and said lazarus come forth verse number 42 the bible says he who was dead and you know you have always heard me verse number 44 and he who was dead came alive he who verse number 44 and he who had died came out bound hands and foot with grave clothes his face was wrapped with the clothes and jesus said to them lose him and let him go verse number 45 the bible says lose him and let him go verse number 45 the bible says then many of the jews who had come to mary and see these things jesus did believed in him blessed be the name of the lord jesus said to the man who was dead come forth and Lazarus comes forth and he tells them lose him and let him go there are versions that says remove the grave clothes remove the grave clothes blessed be the name of the Lord and it's so exciting when I thought about this I thought about what what, what Paul wrote to us that put on the full armor of God in other words Jesus was calling uh, Lazarus from a place of the grave. He was calling him from a, from a dead place to a place of a warrior. In other words, remove the grave clothes and put on the full 
armor of God that you may stand sana. and right now if you stand on our feet I want us to make a prayer that in the name of Jesus that in the name of Jesus everything that has been holding you they are lose, it is losing you every power that has been holding your finances every power that has been holding your ministry it is losing you now in the name of Jesus it is letting you go are you ready to wage war in a minute the Bible says uh, that we do not wrestle with flesh and blood but we wrestle with powers and principles and now in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare every one of us, and in the sound of my voice, if maybe you are bound by the yokes of sicknesses, I decree in the name of Jesus, those yokes are getting broken now, in the name of the Lord, yokes of curses, in the name of the Lord, they are letting you go, in the name of Jesus Christ, the yokes of depression are letting you go, in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, Rakas you're walking in your freedom you're walking in your liberty in the name of Jesus for who he who the son of God sets free he is free indeed he who the son of God sets free he is free indeed Powers of darkness that have been holding you captive right now. I command them to lose you and to let you go in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and pray for yourself and pray for yourself. Oh, Usher yourself into freedom. Usher yourself into liberty. Usher yourself into freedom. For one meter. Oh, Generational curses have been holding the people of God down right now. I command them to be broken in the name of Jesus. Oh, Yokes of diabetes. Yokes of diabetes. I command them to lose you in the name of Jesus. Yokes of fibroids. Yokes of fibroids that have been holding you. I command them in the name of Jesus. Lose you. Never shall for upon Mount Zion, upon Mount Zion, there is deliverance. Upon Mount Zion, there is deliverance. Upon Mount Zion, there is deliverance. I usher you to your deliverance. I usher you to your reward. I usher you to your deliverance. In the name of Jesus, Rama Shakatanabo. And every song shall be broken. You were the victor's cry. You were overcome. You were overcome. Every hiding has come down. Every song shall be broken. And tonight, as we're standing in the presence of the Lord, I want to take power and authority and decree and declare that we are walking into your freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. Those chains of sicknesses that have been holding you, I command them to lose you in the name of Jesus. Powers of darkness that have been holding you, I command them in the name of Jesus. The name that is above every other name, they are losing you now. They are being broken now in the name of Jesus. Yokes of poverty. In the name of the Lord, we speak to them. In the name of Jesus Christ, he became poor that we may become richer. I usher you into financial freedom. I usher you into financial freedom. In the name of Jesus. I now declare and declare in the name of Jesus generational yokes 
that have been holding the people of God. For everybody under the sound of my voice, as I stretch forth my hand, I speak in the name of the Lord. I usher you into a freedom. Those yokes are getting broken. Those chains are getting broken. In the name of Jesus. And you're walking into your reward. You're walking into your reward. You've been asking God, maybe you're here and you've been asking God questions. I came to speak to you. This is your word. This is your season of reward. This is a season of reward in the name of Jesus. Would you lift up your hands above your head and celebrate the King of Kings? And celebrate the Lord of Lords. And as I you always do look for a neighbor and tell them neighbor this is my season of reward look for another neighbor and tell them neighbor relationship surrender revelation look for another neighbor and tell them neighbor rolling the stone and then revelation and then prophesy to yourself and declare this is my season of reward if you believe the art, lift up your hands above your head and shout to the Lord. Come on, give him praise. 